Hi there, I'm Mary Ellen Zung, and I am the lifestyle coach for the Lakeland Hills Family YMCA pre-diabetes program. I'm here today to talk to you about pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and a little bit about neuropathy. So let's get going. I'm going to put my glasses on. <laughs> I don't want to miss a detail. So what we're going to be talking about today is um, sort of a continuum of disease, insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and neuropathy. Um, I want you to know that diabetes is preventable through lifestyle, and we'll talk about what that means. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about holistic care and lifestyle for neuropathy, some holistic things you can do if you're in pain. And uh, I want to tell you about the diabetes prevention program that's starting on October 1st at the Lakeland Hills Family YMCA in Mountain Lakes. Uh, so I'll give you all the details about that. It's an awesome program, and I'm the lifestyle coach that guides you through it. So let's talk about this disease and uh, the continuum of insulin resistance, prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, and diabetic neuropathy, as you can see on the slide here. So let's talk about the disease, diabetes and neuropathy. It's a continuum starting from a very innocent seeming insulin resistance leading to prediabetes, type two diabetes, and diabetic neuropathy. So diabetes is when you have uh, high blood sugar in your blood system. But it's a series of metabolic disorders that occur over time based on some preventable lifestyle factors. Let's first talk about insulin. Insulin is a hormone made by the pancreas that helps glucose in your blood enter the cells of your muscles, fat, liver, and that's where it's used for energy. So our body enjoys using sugar and carbohydrate for energy. Uh, Prediabetes is also called impaired glucose tolerance or borderline. We used to call it borderline diabetes. Um, and that's where your body has a higher than normal blood. So insulin resistance is when your muscles and fat and liver don't respond well to insulin and can't easily take up the glucose from your blood. And as a result, your pancreas makes more insulin to help glucose enter your cells. And as long as your pancreas can't make enough insulin to overcome your cells, weak response to the insulin, your blood glucose stays in a healthy range. So with the prediabetes, your sugar levels are anything between 100 and 125. That's considered prediabetes. So if you go to your doctor and they say, um, you know, your sugar level's a little high, you just, you know, watch your sugars. Ask them, what are my numbers? You want to know what your numbers are. Um, sometimes the doctors won't really push prediabetes. Some doctors don't even recognize it as a real disease. So at know your numbers. Um, usually with insulin resistance um, in, in the beta cells in the pancreas aren't making enough insulin to keep the blood glucose in the normal range. So without enough insulin, the extra glucose stays in the bloodstream rather than entering your cells. cells. And this could, if untreated, it could lead to uh, risks for developing type 2 diabetes. Also, there's higher risks of heart disease, stroke, and nerve damage. So know your numbers. You can test for prediabetes. There's a blood test or an oral glucose test as well. And people with prediabetes are often don't have any symptoms. So you might not know. Um, 
sometimes if your numbers are getting a little bit higher, there might be symptoms of prediabetes or diabetes such as frequent urination or blurred vision or constant thirst, fatigue, frequent infections and cuts and bruises that heal slowly or tingling or numbness in your hands or your feet. So we covered insulin resistance, prediabetes. Let's talk a little bit about type 2 diabetes. There's no real cure for type 2 diabetes, but you can improve it and you can manage it. Um, so type 2 diabetes is defined as an insulin or a blood glucose level of 126 or above. So if you have prediabetes, you want to change your nutrition and your exercise and your lifestyle before it gets out of hand. You can prevent type 2 diabetes. People with type 2 diabetes have a 10-year shorter life expectancy. Um, and there's also, this is the ugly truth, but a 20-time increase of amputation or blindness or kidney failure. So these are things that certainly nobody wants to suffer with or no one wants to see a loved one suffer with. Uh, diabetic neuropathy is the nerve damage caused by diabetes and it's a progressive disease. You might have a loss of sensation or pain or weakness um, in the feet and sometimes in the hands. And it's prevalent in people with prediabetes or diabetes who have difficulty managing their blood levels um, or have high blood pressure or overweight or are over 40 years of age. Um, so over time, it could lead to muscle weakness in the feet and loss of reflexes, especially around the ankles. But uh, there's, you know, the lifestyle change through the diet and exercise and learning how to control blood levels without medication. The studies have shown that metformin, a common um, uh, type 2 diabetic, uh, type 2 diabetes drug is only 30% effective, where lifestyle change is 60 to 80% effective in preventing type 2 diabetes. I know that was a lot of information. That was sort of an overview of the continuum of what we're talking about, insulin resistance, prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, and um, diabetic neuropathy. So just a couple of statistics here. Um, diabetes is truly an epidemic in our country and around the world. Just in our country, over 30 million Americans have type 2 diabetes, but 86 um, million Americans, or 38% of all adults, have prediabetes. And the progression to diabetes from those people is 10% a year. So that affects another almost 9 million Americans a year that will progress from prediabetes to type 2 diabetes. And only 10% of these people actually know that they have prediabetes. So um, again, one out of every three Americans has prediabetes, but only 10% know it. I find that really alarming. So this education about prediabetes and type 2 diabetes is really important. Spread the, spread the news, spread the word. So um, alarming symptoms, uh, no alarming symptoms really, as I mentioned before. Um, if you're over 45, ask your doctor to test for fasting blood sugar. Um, I know in this time, a lot of people may not want to go, or if you're not feeling well, or if you feel like you're overweight, you might not want to go to the doctor because they're gonna tell you, lose weight, or you know, eat better, or exercise. But get your annual um, uh, physical. It's really important to know your numbers. So if you're over 45 and overweight, you're more likely to have prediabetes. And if you're over 65, the risk increases. So uh, you, can, you can even buy a glucometer to have at home and test your uh, blood sugar from time to time. If you have high blood pressure or cholesterol already, you're at a higher risk. 
And if you had gestational diabetes while pregnant, you're at a higher risk. And of course, if, if it runs in your family, you're at a higher risk. Um, if you've had polycystic ovary ovarian sy syndrome, um, PCOS, you're at four times higher risk um, for insulin resistance, prediabetes, and diabetes. Okay, so all that scary statistics and news about what it is, I want to tell you that um, type 2 diabetes is preventable, so that's the good news, uh, with lifestyle. So what you eat, how much you exercise, your quality of sleep, and how you manage your stress. It also includes things like how, your quality of relationships. Do you have a community, a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning? How well we manage our thoughts. Are our thoughts negative, positive? Um, being able to move our bodies and feed it well we, and have that appropriate rest are all super important. So you, if you have those risk factors, you want to work on those lifestyle changes. And that's uh, what the Diabetes Prevention Program is all about. And I'll tell you that in, about that in a few minutes. But first, let's talk about what we mean by nutrition, good nutrition. What does that mean? So you want to be able to get at least five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables in every day. Um, have some green leafy vegetables every day. You want to limit added sugar, including sugary drinks, and they're everywhere. Sugars are everywhere. They're in drinks, yogurts, ketchup, tomato sauce, uh, salad dressing. So know how to read your labels and look at that. Uh, you want to limit saturated fats. So saturated fats are those things found in animal products. So if you can lessen the amount of saturated fat, that will help you not only with diabetes, but other things like heart disease, high blood pressure. So uh, the other thing related to nutrition is to limit alcohol. So the recommendation is no more than one drink per day. Um, and eating healthy fats. So instead of the saturated fats, you want to eat things like nuts and seeds, avocados, uh, wild fish, like wild salmon, and olive oil. And definitely watch your portions. So portion control is key. So that's nutrition. The next lifestyle change is exercise. And I always tell people to do what you love to do. If you do what you love to do, you're going to continue to do it on a more routine basis and have more fun doing it. And that's, that's good for your body, too. So the um, Diabetes Prevention Program, the American Medical Association, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention all recommend 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity per week. So really, when you think about it, that's only 30 minutes a day, five, five days a week. Uh, and moderate intensity is something that is going to get your heart rate going. So do that for 30 minutes. It could be a 30-minute walk, um, five days a week, and that's, that's really all you need to do to help prevention. There are so many benefits to exercise, not just preventing uh, diabetes, but of course weight loss. Um, exercise strengthens your bones and muscles. It lowers your blood pressure. It lowers your stress hormones. It increases dopamine, which is the feel-good hormone. And it also helps prevent certain diseases and cancers. Uh, also lowers your risk of heart disease and stroke. And exercise can also be really fun and very social too, which is good for our health. So the next lifestyle uh, activity is stress management. And so we, with stress management, I like to introduce people to meditation and deep breathing and um, 
when I, sometimes when I say meditation, people get scared, <laughs> but it's really just a way of slowing down, listening to your breath, and putting yourself in a, in a state of relaxation. So meditation and deep breathing not only help our thoughts, but directly affect our bodies at the cellular level. So there's a lot of science right now looking at mind-body and body-mind and how the two affect each other. 80% um, of uh, American adults uh, talk about, yes, I'm stressed. So they report that they're, that they're feeling stress most of the time. So the direct effect of stress raises the blood glucose levels and we're most likely to engage in behaviors that are not good for our health when we're stressed, right? We might have a little extra portion or we might have an extra drink or we might be on the couch instead of taking that walk. So, you know, you, you might want to um, pr put a practice of meditation into your, into your day or relaxation. Um, so research shows that practicing meditation regularly helps lower blood pressure, slows the heart rate, and it changes the brain waves to be in a more relaxed state. It helps with coping skills, greater self-awareness, better relationships, and improved focus in other areas of your life, less depression and less anxiety. And all you need to do uh, for breathing is close your eyes, put your feet flat on the floor, hands in your lap in a comfortable position and just sigh it out. Maybe put your hand on your belly and breathe in, breathe out, breathe in through your lungs, down to your belly, breathe out through your belly and up through your lungs. And just do that, practice it for a minute until you get the hang of it and see how you feel just notice how you feel there are lots of meditation apps and you can get those on your phone or your ipad um, there's lots of free free things out there that you can try the next uh, lifestyle choice is sleep and most of us are sleep deprived um, and Experts agree that we need to get seven to eight hours of sleep per night. So you wanna to try to, if you're not doing that already, figure out what time you need to wake up in the morning, count backwards seven to eight hours, hours and make sure that lights are off at that time. Um, putting this, this is tough for a lot of people, but making this a priority, um, can be a great new routine for helping with stress management. Sleep helps stress management, it helps weight. Um, so you wanna be sort of in a cool, dark room, have a wind down routine for yourself. Um, I also recommend not eating or exercising close to bedtime and definitely no blue light. <laughs> so I know a lot of people sleep with their telephone next to their bed. Um, you know, or their TV is on or their computer. So try to, you know, think about not having that blue light in your room. Um, so how do we bring this all together? It's about small changes and moving forward. But so much of what we do in action has to do with our motivation and setting up routines and getting positive support from family and friends and managing our thoughts. So it's possible to do all of these things. Um, if you need help, definitely the diabetes program. Um, I'm available also to talk with you more at any time. So let's talk a little bit about neuropathy and some things that you can do if you or someone you know is experiencing these kinds of symptoms. So neuropathy, again, is a disease or a dysfunction of one or more peripheral nerves, and that's typically causing numbness or weakness. So it could be your motor nerves, your sensory nerves, or your autonomic nerves. So with the motor nerves, that would be difficulty moving your arms or legs or muscle spasms or twitching. Um, 
if you're having muscle spasms, pickle juice is great for that. <laughs> um, just a little tip. Um, so also with your motor nerves, you might have um, decreased reflexes. With the sensory, you might have sensitivity to touch or decreased sensation. And you might have an inability to feel temperature changes or pain with hot and cold. Um, or you might have a loss of reflexes and coordination. And then with the autonomic nerves, you might experience nausea, vomiting, dizziness, excessive sweating, problems with your bowel function, irregular heart rate, or difficulty swallowing. So I know none of us want to be in that kind of position, <laughs> but if someone is experiencing these things already, um, there are things that you can do to feel better and improve your condition. So, you know, if you're experiencing diabetic neuropathy, all of these lifestyle choices matter a great deal. So things like um, keeping your blood sugar levels in a normal range, getting exercise, quitting smoking, maintaining that regular sleep schedule, uh, maintaining that healthy weight or losing weight. Um, foot care. So neuropathy shows up in the feet. So looking at your feet daily, you know, not just assuming they're okay. Um, maybe getting therapeutic shoes, um, putting safety measures in place for loss of sensation if you're noticing a loss of sensation. You could use hot or cold compresses um, for pain management. You could take a warm bath, have a massage, use turmeric for um, to reduce inflammation. Vitamin B and D are helpful with pain and stress. And you could even use like a cayenne pepper or capsaicin cream if you have um, uh, some pain. Uh, essential oils like lavender are very relaxing. You could put that in your bath uh, or just have it aroma, aromatherapy in the air. Um, meditation, as we mentioned, and acupuncture can help with pain. So these are all some of the holistic ways to help with pain, um, which I would recommend first before going to any, um, anything more serious that would, might have any side effects. So if you haven't gotten this message through yet, I just want to say again, prevention works. Um, the lifestyle interv intervention programs like the YMCA's Diabetes Prevention Program have shown to reduce the number of cases of type 2 diabetes by 58% and 71% among individuals age 60 and over. So a lot of success with uh, reducing, uh, so preventing diabetes. Uh, there were hundreds of millions of dollars of peer-reviewed scientific research that has demonstrated that lifestyle programs like the Diabetes Prevention Program works. So now I want to tell you a little bit more about the YMCA's Diabetes Prevention Program. The program is, was, was developed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, but the program has been adapted for the Y, and it's a local team of folks that run the program for you. We also work with community partners for chronic disease prevention, including um, there's six different chronic disease prevention programs at the Y. Uh, prediabetes, asthma, MS, cancer, arthritis, and heart disease. So those are all other programs that are available. Um, so registration is available. It's up on the website, the Lakeland Hills Family YMCA website. You can just click on um, di uh, chronic disease prevention programs and then click on diabetes prevention program and then you'll be asked to fill out a couple of forms and register for the program. It's a 25-week program uh, led by a lifestyle coach. That would be me. And um, the one-year program is 
so the first 19 weeks starting October 1st we have a program every evening on Thursdays at 6 p.m. it runs from 6 to 7 and during this time because we are all socially distancing and the um, we're, we're, we're staying apart, we're wearing masks, we are doing this program on Zoom <laughs> every night. So when you register, you'll get a Zoom link, so you don't even have to leave your house. And it's free. So there's no cost to this program because we got a grant from the New Jersey Department of Health to um, support the cost of this program. So it's a really supportive environment in a small group setting and you get to know the people even on the Zoom call. It's, um, it's not a lecture kind of uh, situation, it's definitely a group support situation. So I try to do uh, a little education but a lot of help um, facilitating the group. So there are some program qualifications. You have to be at least 18 years old. Um, so overweight is a qualification because we want you to lose 7% of your joining weight. So that's one of the program goals. And um, you have to have prediabetes confirmed by one of three different blood tests or a previous diagnosis um, of gestational diabetes. Um, if there's no blood test, we have a, we have a risk assessment tool and you'd have to have a qualifying score on the risk assessment. So again, the program goals, we have two goals for the program, well actually three. The first two are to reduce your body weight by 7% throughout the program and then increase your physical activity to 150 minutes per week. And then the third goal of course is to prevent type 2 diabetes. So the diabetes group sessions are one hour evening meeting, as I mentioned, on Thursdays. We discuss healthy topics and problem solve challenges. Um, every participant gets a participant notebook and um, you would be emailed the session notes a day or two before the session to review the notes. Um, since we're not in person, there's no personal weigh-in, so you would report your weekly weight um, as one of the statistics that we need to keep. So you would just email me that each week, here's my weight. Um, I would also ask you if you tracked your food, so that's another requirement of the program is to actually, and we teach you how to do this, how to write down what you're eating and then after a couple of weeks of practicing that you start to write down um, what your activity levels are and so those are a couple of the um, the data points that were that were required for the diabetes prevention program so um, that is the program for today I hope you um, Came, uh, came out of this with uh, a better understanding of prediabetes and type 2 diabetes and hope you know what your numbers are and if you are interested in the program with the YMCA to please get in touch with the YMCA and register for the program. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.